Hi, I'm Brent Willett. I have been a Zaxworks Pro Animator user for many years, and one of the things that I've always liked about it is that it's very easy to pick up and learn. Uh, today I'm going to quickly go over creating 3D text and uh, just some little basics of animation. So first we'll open the program. First thing we get is kind of this quick start menu where we can create our 3D text. We can also import an Illustrator file. We can start with a 3D primitive and there's choices here for that. Or we can import a 3D object that was made in another program. But we're going to do text today so we'll click on this one. And then we get a window where you can you can pick a font or have uh, other text tools here. We'll just type something up real quick and click OK. And that'll take us into the Pro Animator interface. So here we are. We have our text already with uh, an extrusion and a bevel on it already. Zoom in here in our 3D preview window. This is the window that we'll be working in. Uh, this object list window here is what we have in our scene. Any any objects that we have in our scene will be in layers in a track. So this is a text layer and we control this down to see that we have all our letters, individual letters here, and they are all in one track and that's what we'll be animating. Over here on our object controls window is certain controls that we have for whatever object we have highlighted in the objects list and this is where we can change our depth or change our edge profile to have a different bevel. Uh, there's all sorts of different pre-made choices here from just simple basic ones like like a uh, straight bevels or flat sides or even something crazy like this one just all sorts of different things you can you can use you can even make your own but there's lots to choose from here that are already pre-built so we'll start with just a basic bevel um, and I'll also point out in this in the object controls menu if you're if it's a text layer and you need to edit your text you can click edit text right here and that'll take you back into that initial window that we had where we typed up the text I also want to point out over here in the objects list panel that these icons down here will uh, get the same things that that first quick start menu had like here's where we could import a 3d object or an illustrator file or make another text layer or primitives or or whatever so uh, once we're in the program that's how we could get to those one thing I want to show real quickly is the bevel and one of the really neat things about Pro Animator is the edge profiles it have and I just showed you some of these but I'm going to point out down here in the material splits this shape is basically the bevel like if we were looking at this object from the top down this is a front face right here the front of course this is the back the back and this is the edge and we can see that it, it kind of mimics this shape here and I'll go back to that crazier one you can see that this is the shape of this bevel and what's really neat about this the reason this is called material splits is because you're able to use this to uh, apply different materials along the edge of this bevel. Uh, we'll go to material swatches over here and there's a whole bunch of materials that are pre-made and we will grab one of these and the easiest way to apply a texture to an object is to just simply drag it on top and what that did is it put that texture into the first dock here and that's number one which corresponds with uh, these three numbers here which is the front back and sides now let's say we want to add a different color to the edge so let's grab silver and we'll bring this down to the dock here and then we can take that and put that number two over the edge now our edge is silver but here's where it gets better we can split this up into as many different sections as we want just simply by clicking along this line and you see it it, it split it up into two different sections if we keep clicking we can get divide this into each one of these little areas if we want to but let's say we want to make this area right here gold so I'll grab a gold color gold material and I can drag it into the dock down here or I can even drag it right directly on top of that number and it'll automatically put it in the dock but here it put that gold color along that section of the uh, the edge and we can slide these around like if we want it to come all the way over here we could just simply slide it and you can see that it updates live as you're sliding it maybe we want this back here or maybe we want to put some more and we can assign 
you know, as many as up to six different colors along this edge in any number of divisions here. So that's a very handy thing. And if we don't need them, we can just simply drag drag them out. And we can get back to uh, just two different colors. So let's go back to our object controls and back to our just our standard bevel. And now that it's a different different bevel, it's kind of a different position, so I'll just slide this so this front face, or this, I'm sorry, this front bevel is gold. Alright, now quickly, uh, animation. Animation is done with poses, not with keyframes. I like to think of a pose as kind of like a collection of keyframes. It, it takes all the information from uh, your position, scale, rotation, and keeps it all in this box. So to create another one, we just simply double click here in the timeline. And now we have two poses with what's called a transition in between. It automatically creates this transition. And the transition has some other uh, animation characteristics like arches, which can help control uh, the motion paths and ease and uh, some other things. Let's get our view here to the front and we'll be using our main camera there's are some other cameras like this user camera for instance we can go to if we need to see our animation we'll go to that in just a minute but you can see that it shows our main camera but our main camera is what uh, we're looking through for the animation and that can be animated as well although we're not going to do that right now uh, poses can be moved around they're uh, Length can be changed, so let's say this animation we're going to want to start at the very beginning of the timeline and we're going to make it two seconds. And we can see down here is uh, the timing for the pose. This particular pose that's highlighted is starting at two, two seconds and ending at 224. Alright, now that we have this on our front, we'll go to our first pose and we'll make some changes. Let's uh, have the animation fly from behind the camera. So we'll go to our move section here and just move this slider and this will move it forward towards the camera and this little uh, circle here this is a, a direction pointer and this is how we can kind of move it around into a different direction if I move it far enough you can see that that looks like an arrow um, move it down here and then for, go forward a little bit one thing uh, this this was built with the idea of just keeping movement very simple uh, very easy to use sometimes you need something a little bit more precise and that's what this XYZ is here. If we click on this, then we get the individual X, Y, and Z coordinates. And personally, this is where I always work because I like having the more precision of being able to move just one coordinate at a time. And you can type in the number then too. But we've got this going towards the camera. And then if we come up, up to our timeline window, we can just see that there's our animation. Not much to it, but it's it's getting on the screen. We can make it a little interesting very easily. And this can be where we use our other cameras like the user camera where we can now see what we're doing with our text in relation to the camera. Uh, maybe we can rotate it. This global rotation will rotate the whole thing that's in the whole track and we can of course in rotate the individual X, Y, and Z parameters. Or this local will rotate the individual items that are in that track. And same thing the X, Y, and Z parameters. These over here are random. Scale is kind of the same thing. Global scale will scale the whole thing up and down and of course you can do the individual X, Y, and Z parameters. Local scale will scale just the individual items and this box right here is is random. So we can very quickly set all that up and this is all just contained in this one pose and when it animates it'll animate between the two poses so we have a a little bit more interesting text. Let's go back to our main camera and there we have it animating on. I will point out real quickly in the material editor if you want to make your own materials you certainly can. Uh, there's several different types of materials you can make and uh, within the, each material there's several shaders. If we want to add our own image that's in color and we just simply click on that box and a window will pop up for us to navigate to where we have our image. Let's maybe pick this honeycomb texture and you see it put it here with some other options to play around with. All of these other shaders 
behave the same way if you want to load in your own image. That's how you do it. Now let's say we want to replace the face of our text here with this honeycomb. So we just simply grab it and drag it over to the first position, the number one, and here we have our honeycomb. And maybe this is a little bit big, so we want to shrink that honeycomb down. We can adjust the mapping if we just go down here a little bit further. And here we can scale it up or down. We can rotate it, we can move the position of it, and here's a whole bunch of different options for changing the way it is mapped to the object. So that's pretty easy. We have an animation, we have, have put materials on it and colored it and added our own material in just a few minutes. This is one of two beginner tutorials. In the second one, I start with an Illustrator file and show how to set that up in Illustrator and then bring it into ProAnimator and do some animation with it. Um, going through the whole process from beginning to end including rendering. So if you're interested in that, uh, please check that out and thanks for watching.